as I'm approaching 2023, that's how I'm thinking about it. What, what does that look like for me to continue to identify those boat full of leaders and then train and equip them, equip them along with me, with our teams, as, as teams are forming in the work, as we're doing the work. Hey guys, welcome back to the H3X podcast where I, Mark Gearing, together with your host, Dave Miller, explore the head, the heart, and the hands of the Multiplying Church and her leaders. You know, it is the end of December right now, and we're approaching a new year, 2023. And I take some time every year, like I'm sure a lot of you do, to pray, to process, to lean in to what God might be saying, and then also just look at uh, opportunities and obstacles as we're looking at the new year. And I want to share with you just some thoughts on how I'm approaching that as we head into 2023, and I think it might be helpful for you. But um, mostly today, I just want to have a conversation. I didn't have just a ton of thoughts prepared, but um, I do think it's really critical as we're thinking about how we are approaching the task and the vision that God's giving us to be clear on what our role is in that task. And so as we're talking about big vision and even vision for a new year like 2023, this is not just about like what do we see, but then what should we be doing in the midst of that? And I like this, uh, this phrase that really helps to guide how I think about my role in leadership. And it's this phrase that says, only do what only you can do. Only do what only you can do. And the idea behind that phrase is that it's our job, especially in, in a role of trying to be catalytic and getting something new going in a, in a place, it's our job to be only doing what we can do. In other words, we want to constantly be looking at where are the gaps and the needs, um, both out there in the harvest, but also as we're laboring alongside of others and team and teaming, um, and we're wanting to raise up new leaders, we should be at the edge and we should be constantly raising up others uh, to be a part of the, the team and a part of the work. And so only do what only you can do should uh, guide it, or at least it does from my perspective. So we've got a big vision, but within that, what is our role? What is my role in the middle of that? And so as we're laboring here in New York City in this metro and really across the Northeast, because that's part of what God has really called us to and spoken to us about, um, I see my role as um, to fill a boat full of leaders. Maybe you've heard me talk about this on this podcast before, but I want to share that a little more in depth today about 2023 is coming. What is my role in seeing every people and every place reached across the Northeast and here in the metro area? Well, this idea of the boat full of leaders, it comes from Mark 5. And it's not the specific, uh, the main message of Mark chapter 5, but I think it's such a helpful picture. And so, uh, what we mostly talk about when we look at this passage is how Jesus goes across the sea to engage the Gadarenes and he finds this demoniac, right? And he begins to talk with the demoniac and engage with him and uh, ultimately he gets set free from demons, right? And then what does he want to do? He wants to get in the boat and come with Jesus. And Jesus says, no, right? Uh, we think he's going to say yes, we're surprised, but he says no. He says, go back to your family and your friends and tell them all that God has done for you. And then uh, fast forward, we find in the book of Luke um, that there's a whole crowd that's gathered because of the work of this guy. And so we focus on that story about the the, per, the person of peace that is the, the gathering demoniac. And that's, that's important and that's good that we focus on that, right? But there's more to be uh, seen here. And I think what's powerful here is that what Jesus does for the, the demoniac is one part of the story, but then there's also these guys with him in the boat that come across the water and they encounter this, uh, this storm that comes and then they end up at the, at the seashore, right? There's that whole part of the story. Well, as they end up there, what we see is that Jesus is bringing along with him into the work these apostolic workers. And so Jesus sees that his time in the ministry is short. He's not going to have um, a long time. He knows from the Father that he's got a short time frame. And so his goal is to see this movement get started, get catalyzed. And to do that, he's strategically looking for other apostolic workers that are going to be carrying on the work past him. In fact, we see that commission in Acts 1.8 that the, the, the gospel, the witness of what they've seen with Jesus directly, shoulder to shoulder, would go from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. Well, that's going to involve more than just Jews being engaged, but actually all of the nations need to hear this gospel, right? Well, to my knowledge, this is the first time in Mark chapter 5 that Jesus is actually doing that. He's taking his disciples cross-culturally to show them what that looks like, 
and he's doing it with them in the boat. He's doing the work. He's modeling it. But then there's going to come a moment where they're actually commissioned to go and to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, right? So he's actually modeling that task. And who is he modeling that task to? He's modeling it to guys that are called to catalyze and get things started in a way that's apostolic, to be sent, to go, and to bring the gospel. And so how do you raise up sent ones? Well, not in a classroom, right? You can't just give them the knowledge. You've actually got to bring them shoulder to shoulder with you. So that's why I I love this picture of the boat full of leaders in Mark chapter 5, that Jesus saw his, his job in during his earthly ministry in those few years was to get a boat full of leaders. It was to engage and to go and to do the work, but to do it in such a way that he's actually looking for these guys as he does it to bring along with him and then pass off the ministry to them to accomplish Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. So as I'm approaching 2023, that's a fast way of talking about this idea of a boat full of leaders. This is the task before us. And that doesn't mean that we're not still sharing the gospel. Yes, that we're not making disciples. Yes, we need to be doing that. That we're not starting churches. Yes, we need to be doing that. But in the process, we want to be having our eyes open to look for the leaders that God is raising up. Those that are this acronym we like is FATTER, Faithful, Available, Teachable, Reproducing. And as we find those that are faithful, available, teachable, and reproducing, we want to model to them what this looks like, the way that Jesus did. We want to assist them and help them get started. Then we want to take a step back and watch as they continue on engaging in the work and then ultimately launch them out to do it the way Jesus did with his disciples. So we're looking for leaders as we do the work. We're going to go alongside with them, and we're looking for those guys that we can pass things off to. And so as I'm approaching that in 2023, I want to share with you a couple of things I'm processing through. And so how did Paul then do this? Because uh, we see Jesus doing this model. And in fact, it says um, there in in this Sermon on the Mount, not Sermon on the Mount, but the, the Upper Room Discourse in John 15 to 17, right? Here's Jesus' parting words with his disciples. And he actually says to his disciples, and he's actually praying to the Father, and he says that uh, he has accomplished the work he's been set, to, set out to do, and he has uh, not let any um, fall away except, the, uh, except Judas, right, the son of perdition. But otherwise, all of these disciples he has faithfully stewarded, and he calls that the, the completing of the work that God has given him to do. And so, man, that is such a powerful picture. And instead of, yes, the cross was the finished work of Christ, but he's actually telling his disciples and telling the Father he's completed the work that's been entrusted to him to do. And that work looks like these guys that are right in front of him, these disciples that he has faithfully poured into. That's pretty cool. And that means that uh, if that's what Jesus did, why would we expect we would do anything else in faithfully stewarding, getting getting something, a a new work started? And so, uh, you know, we see Paul then emerging on the scene, right? And is Paul doing something different than Jesus? I would actually say no. He's doing the exact same thing. He's looking to go out and do the work of engaging new new places and peoples, of sharing the gospel, of, of making disciples, of planting churches as he goes and gathering together those disciples and even raising up leaders in the midst of all of that. But those leaders are not just the, the elders of those churches, but he's actually looking for who he can bring along with him. On the first missionary journey, um, he, he goes in Acts 13 and 14, right? And he's going to this area of Galatia and doing the work. Those, those, those parts that I just shared with you about. And actually, at the end of that journey, um, in Acts 14, 23, he's appointing elders and on to 26. And then he's reporting in Antioch that they've completed the work they've been entrusted to do, right? So that's a powerful picture. But the work they've been entrusted to do, they're actually doing it there. And they've, they've appointed some leaders, some elders in those churches to bring depth. But then Paul, he goes on, a, on a, another missionary journey and he brings along with him Silas, right? But he also grabs this guy, Timothy, who's well spoken of from among those churches who Paul sees in him this uh, apostolic uh, impulse, this apostolic uh, capability that needs developing. And so rather than just giving him some information, hey, go try this and and developing him in some classroom. No, he brings him along with him into the work. So now the, the same thing is happening again. And Paul is bringing along with him a boat full of leaders that as he goes, he then is picking up Priscilla and Aquila, right? And he's leaving off at different points. He's leaving Silas and Timothy 
uh, to continue the work as he's engaging over there um, in Macedonia, for example. He's going over to Macedonia there as you get into Acts 16, right? And he's, he's uh, raising up these apostolic workers and training them by leaving them off behind to, uh, to, to get some reps in and get some practice in in learning how to do the work. Now, it's necessity, right? Because Paul's experiencing persecution, so he's got to move on. But this is how you raise up those apostolic leaders and how you find that boat full and train them up is by bringing them along with you into the work and then leaving them off to continue the work. So we see Paul doing that, right? Paul is raising up leaders as he's going. He's doing the same thing that Jesus did. And then uh, he, he's, he's now in Corinth and he's finding Priscilla and Achilla as he's waiting for Timothy and Silas to come along back to him, right? And then uh, making many disciples there because uh, God says that he's got many that he's, he's working in. And so to stay, so Paul stays, right? And then that missionary journey kind of finishes out as he heads over to Ephesus finally. And uh, he then makes his way back to Jerusalem and he leaves off Priscilla and Aquila. Well, then we fast forward to the last missionary journey of Paul. And what does he do? He heads back um, through those, those uh, uh, churches in Galatia and on over to Asia, the province of Asia where there's Ephesus. And he spends two years there. And it actually says over the course of two years in Acts 19.10 that all of Asia hears the word of the Lord. And so in the midst of all of that, there's Apollos. He's being raised up by Priscilla and Achilles. They're actually beginning to get, catch a vision for this withness and releasing new leaders. And somehow Paul finds these, these disciples of John and the harvest in Acts 19. And then all of Asia hears the word of the Lord as Paul is serving a boat full of leaders alongside with him and releasing them into the harvest to accomplish this task. So that's a fast flyby view. And we could even go on from there to talk about how then Paul goes all the way back over to Macedonia. And there's this gathering at Troas. There's a lot to share about there, right? That was a, a 30,000 foot view, a really fast overview of the missionary journeys of Paul. And then talking about how Jesus raised up leaders. But the point of this episode today in talking with you guys is that that Jesus and then Paul, they understood their role in the work to only do what only they could do, right? And in the midst of that process that started out with them doing the work, both Jesus and Paul, they both engaged in doing the work. Paul, you see that in Acts 13 and 14 really clearly as he's entering into this area of Galatia and then sharing the gospel, making disciples, planting churches, raising up leaders, and doing it again, doing it again in the next town. But then as, as the work is continuing, he's seeing the value in raising up other leaders to continue that on so that he can actually go to new mission fields. So he's only doing what only he can do rather than um, continue to take on uh, the certain aspects of the, of the work or the leadership. He's actually raising up other leaders and, and helping them level up or give it away in that process. And so what a powerful vision cast for us to be able to say, what does that look like for us to do that? And so as I'm approaching 2023, that's how I'm thinking about it. What, what does that look like for me to continue to identify those boat full of leaders and then train and equip them, equip them along with me, with our teams as, as teams are forming in the work as we're doing the work. So I want to talk about one other aspect of how we're finding those boat full of leaders and how we're engaging and working with them. And so in this episode today, again, I'm just having a conversation with you and I'm just kind of from my heart sharing. I haven't prepared all those thoughts on, on even those journeys. That's all just kind of coming out of my heart. And this is the this is the vision that God's given us. So hopefully it's in me. But, you know, as I'm thinking about how is it that we then find those kind of boat full of leaders, those kind of leaders and raise them up? I think there's a couple of aspects that we see Jesus and Paul both doing. And there's a principle to be found in John 5, 19 that I think you see all throughout the ministry of Jesus. And then you see Paul and Barnabas and then later the other teams that he raises up doing. And that uh, principle is the fact that Jesus, he says in John 5, 19, I only do what I see the Father doing. And I only say what I hear the Father saying. And so I think it's pretty critical for us as we think about how to uh, engage in this work, that there's this dynamic to which we're looking to see where God is at work. And there's a, there's a part of it where we are actually um, constantly seeking, what is Jesus doing? What is God doing? I want to be moving where he's moving and saying what he's saying. And so we've got to be willing to be so tuned in that we are 
willing to take a, a, a step to go when he says go and have enough margin in our schedule to, to, to stop when he says stop and to move over here. And that is how we're going to identify those leaders. We see Jesus, he's going throughout Galilee and he's moving where he sees the father move. And then he's stopping for those that he sees the father stopping with. And then he's appointing those leaders that the father has called him to appoint. So there's a huge dynamic of seeing this work get started that is joining the father in his work. And that's a huge piece of it, right? But then we also see um, him moving with intentionality in, in following something of a pattern here. He's always going into synagogues. He's always moving along to new places. And yes, he's doing that and following the Father, but there's also some intentional uh, just regularity to that or structure to that. We see that with, with Paul as well, right? There's a, uh, in Acts 13, Paul and Barnabas are, are with some other leaders and they're praying and they're fasting and they're waiting to see what the father's doing. They're going to join him at work. And then they, they're sent out, right? To, to accomplish this work. So they're sent in response to and joining the, the father in the work. But then what do they do? They go to Cyprus, they go to Galatia and they're engaging and they're, they're sharing the gospel. They're making disciples, they're planting churches. And we don't have any just, uh, clear indication of how what abiding looks like or or how they're following the father at work but they definitely seem to be uh engaging in a specific regular way uh, a pattern if you will of of going to these peoples and places and you can even see that especially as paul engages in his second missionary journey he's uh he's regularly doing the same task he's going to do the same work how do we know that well we see this this uh, so-called macedonian call as in Acts 16, Paul ends up in Troas, and uh, he tried to, here's the point, he tried to go down to Asia and go up to Bithynia. He tried to go and engage these places, but the Spirit of God had stopped him. What does that tell us? It tells us that there's an aspect of this apostolic work, of this work that Jesus and then Paul uh, was continuing in that was go. God has said go, and you see this in Acts 8 as well, as Philip this evangelist has been told by God to go and he goes and he runs into this Ethiopian eunuch and he stops and he shares with him. But then God translates him and can, and uh, transports him out of that situation. And he continues on. What does he do? He keeps sharing the gospel because God had told him to go. And so there's this dynamic to which we are waiting on God to say, where are you at work and how do we join you in it? But then there's a tension at the same time we see Paul going because God said go. The Great Commission is in effect. He's called to go. He's called to look, to see uh, where there are lost people. That's a, that's a word from the Lord to go and to share with them. But at the same time, he's, he's having his ears tuned in, his eyes tuned in to say, the Spirit of God is stopping us from going. We don't know how God stopped uh, Paul and team from going into Asia, but God did. And there seems to be a strategy that from the Lord that he then brings him back to Asia on that second and third missionary journey to ultimately have this high watermark of seeing the gospel go to all of the province of Asia. But then to backtrack, we see Paul in Troas and he's, he's sensitive enough to get this vision of this Macedonian man, of this, uh, this call to go over there and to serve the work of what God is wanting to do in that area. Here's the point. As we are going about the work, we need to be clear on what our role or our job is within that. And for me, that is encapsulated, or I could summarize it up as a boat full of leaders. That's what God is calling me to do. I'm still going to be doing all of those tasks of sharing the gospel, going, engaging, doing the work. But along the way, I'm trying to have my eyes open constantly. Where is God at work? Where do, where do I see lost people that I need to move towards and do this work? Um, but I'm looking for leaders to raise up along the way. So my task is to be doing the work and to be then trying to find those that I can bring along. But doing the work looks like, God, where are you at work? I want to stop and I want to, I want to uh, stop where God says stop, go where, where God says go. And that's going to require a lot of prayer and a lot of margin in my schedule so that I'm not so full and so busy with a lot of planned activity that I can actually see where God might be moving. And he might surprise me and, hey, stop here. Hey, go there. And I've got to be able to do that if I'm going to actually be in step with the Spirit, in step with what the Father is doing. But in the midst of all that, there is some intentionality. This is not all just constantly um, waiting on the Lord. There seems to be some reality to which God has commissioned us to a, to a task. And we know what that task is. We don't need to just have a word from the Lord before we share the gospel of this person in front of us, before we go and we, we move towards the lostness around us. And so this is how I would summarize as I'm approaching a new year. 
Now, there's some specific things that God is saying to me, to our family that we're being sensitive to. And that's that part of that doing what we see the Father doing. And then there's also this dynamic to which we can actually look at our city and we can break it down and begin to see where the gospel needs to get to. And that's going to fuel our prayers. That's going to fuel our eyes to be able to say, where is God at work? But there's actually a value to that intentionality of saying like, wow, the gospel has got to get up to Yonkers or the northern part of Manhattan, or hey, the gospel has got to get to the Bronx or these different parts of the city that uh, we don't know about where there's work happening. So it's a tension, but we've got to know what our focus is in the midst of that tension. So that's what I would put to you is as you're approaching the new year, do you know the big vision that God's calling you to? And I would actually challenge you to have an overwhelming vision far beyond your ability to accomplish. Otherwise, uh, it's something that you can do in your own strength. We need to have a vision only we can, uh, only God can accomplish, uh, that we can accomplish. But then in the midst of that, do you know your role? Do you know what you are doing? You might know the vision God's calling you to. You might even have a big vision, but what is your specific job in the midst of that? And how are you going about that as we approach 2023? I have clarity of that. Do you know what that vision is? And do you know what your role is in the midst of that and what you could do that only you could do in 2023? If not, I would invite you to sit down, uh, maybe listen to this podcast again and process as this something, a task and a, a way of approaching that God might be giving to you. And if not, what might be he uh, showing you from the life of Jesus and then in the book of Acts that you might uh, put into practice in your leadership and your leadership development as you approach the year? And then what might God be saying to you about the year and how you need to join the Father at work in 2023? Bless you guys. Hopefully that's helpful for you and I look forward to joining you for some new episodes in the next year. Much love.